Yaya and Ray Rodriguez. A couple of veterans, of course, Yaya, three years older at 36. Rodriguez, one inch taller, but has the reach advantage, which he hopes to use. Let's send it back into Joe Martinez. And all five fans, we are set to go with the next fight tonight. Three rounds, this in the UFC Bantamweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's a freestyle fighter standing five feet, seven inches tall. Weighing it officially 135 and one half pounds, his professional record stands at 16 victories with seven defeats. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, here is Ray, the Judge Rodriguez. And across the octagon, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, six inches tall. He weighed in at the Bantamweight limit, 136 pounds, and as a veteran, holds a professional record of 26 victories. 10 defeats, one bout even, and one no contest. Fighting out of Brasilia, Brazil. Here is Ronnie Yaya! And your referee in charge of the action is Herb Dean. Well, how about this for a backstory for Ray Rodriguez? He was stationed at Fort Hood, Texas. There was UFC Fight for the Troops 2 back then. It was about 10 years Ray. ago. Ray. And Ronnie Yaya Fight. was on the card. Rodriguez was in the crowd and noticed Yaya remembers that fight specifically. Yaya got a win over Mike Brown in that matchup. And now they shall dance here in the octagon 10 years later. So we see here, oh, oh nice hand. I was gonna say, Yaya's opening with strikes, but these strikes are, are always, <laughs> always to set up the takedown attempt. He's got the body lock, he's got the hands joined, but Rodriguez has an arm in there that's gonna help him. Let's see how this goes. Rodriguez is doing a really good job. Of, look at him going side to side, trying to create space just to start to lift the under. Yaya's gonna try to step around and start to drag Rodriguez to the mat. I mean, look at the squeeze there. He is using a lot of power. There it is. And there it is. Boom. Down you go, buddy. Not where you want to be with four minutes to go in the round. And dry. And dry. There's, there's no way to overstate how important it is to not get taken down early with these types of guys when you're not even sweating yet. And then look at Yaya, look at the pressure. You see how his face is like right into the chest. There's not a, a millimeter of separation. And that's to make sure that Rodriguez stays down. Obviously when you give it some separation, when you posture up to land a big blow, yeah, that's great, but it's gonna give Rodriguez space to get back to his feet. Yaya's like, no, 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 no. I've taken you down, you're staying down. Well, what Yaya is doing with the shoulder pressure is trying to manipulate Rodriguez into turning in the only direction he feels he can go. And by going towards his left would give up his back. He's not giving him the option to turn to his right. Now he can't because he doesn't have the shoulder pressure as, as deep, right? He doesn't have that left over tie as deep and not driving into Rodriguez as much because Rodriguez is doing a good job of posting at the hip not allowing Yaya to get complete control of this half guard. Well, there's a big fight going on here for guard, right? You see the right leg of Rodriguez. He was pushing on the knee of Yaya, and he was trying to pull that right leg through, trying to get full guard. Obviously, a stronger position than half guard. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, you try and advance to an even better position, but not an easy thing to do against one of the best grapplers in the UFC. If, if, if Rodriguez goes too hard to his right, he'll end up in an arm triangle. If he turns to his left, Yaya will just follow the position and try to take his back. So it's very important that he recognizes that he's got to try to be very careful and patient in his approach to getting up. Yeah, he's going to watch that left arm. There it is. It looked like he almost got full guard again. See what I mean? He's going to watch that left arm because he's trying to reach over. And if he's not careful, Yaya can lock up a head and arm, jump over to the other side. Not as simple as that, of course, but as I say. It's every time he bridges see, into him, See, look there. See, see the position? He's got his arm on the back of his head. It's see kind of dangerous. Yeah. There, right? See him bridging into him is, is where he puts himself at risk. Didn't Makachev just get lock up a arm yeah. triangle from same that way. side, yep. right? Same way. You can't Not bridge back into these guys whenever this is good. That side He's got the underhook. That's nice. That's better work. Now he needs to get on his side. Yep. Try and build the base. He let Gordy underhook. I know. It's crazy. 
Sometimes though, when you're down there, it just doesn't feel right, whatever. You know, maybe it's not technically perfect, but if it doesn't feel good, <laughs> you know, you're like, it doesn't feel good. Could lead to something else that feels worse. <laughs> Shut up, Brendan. You got to just do this. You just got to do the right <laughs> thing, right? You got to do the right thing. Whatever you're trained, if getting the underhook and keeping it is the right thing, regardless of if it's working in the moment, you got to do the right thing. Do what you're training to do every day. This Tr kid does stand-ups and get-ups every day. Yeah, what I'm going to say trust your instincts, DC. Yes. Trust your Absolutely. instincts. Just stopping from laughing after Bisbee told me to shut up. <laughs> Hasn't had a grain of sugar since Monday. <laughs> yeah, he might be a little angry. <laughs> I haven't had a carb since 2002. <laughs> you want to touch this? Well, right. Yaya doing a good job of staying busy in this position and just no matter what is. Rodriguez is doing, there it is. Can't find a way out. Arm choke now. Yeah, Kept there. turning that side, and now he finds himself in this position. And you saw Makachev not have to really get to the opposite side, got the submission. If Mark Yaya can pass, if Yaya can pass, Rodriguez is in a lot of trouble. Oh, there we got out. Nicely done. Now, short time here, 10 seconds to go in round one. Oh, the game plan executed perfectly for the veteran Ronnie Yaya. Round two coming up. Deep breath, deep breath. Okay, my bad, brother. Here we go. Deep breath, brother. Not the first round we wanted. Yeah. Relax. Ten seconds. Get your breath. We're doing a good job inserting that first butterfly hook. He sprawls his hips. It has to be right now that we put our other knee through and go okay. flat to our back. So we're on our hip, sticking the first butterfly hook. He flattens out on the side, the other hip. There's a big space to bring that second knee through, go flat, and then shift him forward. Okay. Got to get off our back. We got to work for it. Exchanging between butterfly hooks and re-underhooking. All right. Okay. You underhook, switch your feet, take the outside hook over so you can, so you can take that. When you control him, you're going to kill his game. He's going to do no breathing if you do that. UFC Fight Night is presented by the U.S. Army. Back on the feet to start round number two, where Ray Rodriguez wants to keep it. He's getting busy here. He's yeah, got to create, got to keep space, though. Can't be close to, yeah, yeah. Look at that, though. When he let his hands go, he's got very, very nice boxing. That was a beautiful combination. Nice shot selection. Finished with a good uppercut. And see the way he's moving backwards. That's great. But he can't back up into the fence. Yaya setting him away. up. He's been, Yaya setting him up. He's, he's cutting off the cage, trying to get him to back up in order to shoot. For the people at home that don't train in an octagon, if you're fighting somebody that's planning to take you down, generally Look. what you do is when you cross that black line, then you know that the fence is right behind you. And that's when it's time to move. That's when it's time to get on your bike, go side to side, lateral Shot. movement, get off the fence, and get back into the open. The shot, there it is. There it is, see? <laughs> right away, the moment he was able to get him enough, far enough in that direction, he took a shot. Because when you're so close to the fence, I know it sounds obvious to say, but you can't back up, you can't go away. You've got nowhere to retreat to. Especially in a smaller octagon. Yeah. This octagon's way smaller, so Yaya doesn't have to cover much distance in order to create that trap yeah. to get Rodriguez down to the ground. And Yaya is just relentless. I mean, once he gets a hold of a leg, he doesn't stop. And he will apply every ounce of strength and pressure that he is capable of until he gets that takedown. It's really impressive to watch. Elevate those hips. Head over to ufcstore.com for all your fight night essentials. Check out bump box speakers, the UFC photo collage and championship gold collections, or stock up on equipment for the ultimate home workout. Start shopping now and save 10% on your first purchase. I have no idea why Rodriguez is reaching over like that, Bisping. He's going to get himself arm triangled if he's not careful. Yeah, he's very care uh, very close to it because Yaya is just going to get that right leg free. Why is he, he keeps bringing his left arm over to the opposite side here instead of just trying to go back to his underhook. Like you said, get up on your right elbow, start to get to your hip and start to 
bridge and build your base back up into Ronnie Yaya. Yeah, he seems so obsessed with trying to get his full guard back and able to get up. What he needs to do, you can shuffle, right, just from that position here, try and get the underhook, and then you slowly shuffle your way up to the, the fence and start to wall walk. Well, you saw it with, with Courtney Casey, right? When she got taken down, she immediately ran almost on her knees to the side of the actor to get up. This is really good now. Let's see what he can do with it. He got the butterfly hooks. He didn't elevate him, though. He, he got to elevate him. Exactly. Get the hips up. If you go butterfly, you got to get the hips up. You got to use the legs to sit up and use your shins to push him back, get the separation, and then get up. But as I said before, I mean, Yaya does not stop. Again, he, he did it again, Vince, but now he got himself in trouble. Right there, he kept bridging into that until he finally got himself into an arm triangle. And now Yaya got it on his good side. There it is, he's thinking about it. There's the tap! He did Black it. Jack Mike from Ronnie did it Yaya. Over and over Submission again. number 21 in Las Vegas tonight. See, he did it over and over again. Rodriguez was intent on bridging back into Yaya. And Yaya actually got it to his good side. And you know once what? he got to his good side, it was over. Maybe for some of his other opponents in the gym or whatever, that's how he gets up. Yeah. But you cannot do that. You cannot make mistakes at this level and against a guy like Ronnie Yaya. Everybody knows how he fights. Yeah. We said it when he walked in. It's relentless. He gets the takedown. I mean, here it is. He gets the single leg. He's rushing in there. He grabs the, the knee. Boom. Pulls that. Puts him flat on his back in a minute. Not quite flat on his back. There it is. Puts him on his butt and then goes to work from there. And we said all the way through, he was threatening the head and arm choke. Yeah. And he was kind of giving that position he up. He kept giving his arm. And then from there, I mean, the squeeze, the pressure there, he had no choice. You know what was crazy, Mikey? When he... when when Rodriguez got to the butterfly, he actually was able to, Yaya just rolled him over to his good side.